Hey everyone. So we've talked about solving systems of equations using substitution and elimination, and, and now I want to apply these ideas to, to word problems and in situations where there's some question that we want to get to the bottom of. Them. And, and really, you know, even beyond that, it turns out that systems of equations, solving systems of equations, is really one of the most applicable ideas uh, in mathematics in general, really. I mean, and there's really a whole, there's a whole field of mathematics devoted to this idea called uh, linear algebra. Uh, okay, so you know, that's a little bit of an aside, but but you know to to tackle these word problems and different situations uh, you know, that come in all different shapes and forms, uh, it might be beneficial to us to to add some structure, uh, a general game plan for for using system of equations to solve problems. And, and so, you know, we, we've talked about two different examples so far. Um, in one of the substitution videos, we, we uh, covered an example where, where a person has some dimes and quarters and we had to figure out how many uh, he had with, you know, keeping in mind some extra conditions. Um, and then we also talked about this mango and pineapple situation uh, when we first were introducing this elimination idea, solving systems with elimination. Um, and, and in both of those examples, we had to come up with our own equations uh, that, that really captured some part of our situation. And we had to solve that system and, and really make sense of what that solution meant for the story. And so this is really the, the, the general strategy to, to solving systems of equations. Um, but, but let me make this a little bit more explicit and, and detailed. So the first thing you really want to do, and that's what we did in, in both of those examples, was you want to define your variables. And whenever you're making equations, uh, you ought to really explicitly know what those variables represent. And so here I also want to make the recommendation that, that we should be as specific, be as specific as possible. For example, uh, if we've got some scenario with mangoes involved, maybe uh, like we had in, in the elimination uh, video, you know, we don't want to just let a variable m be mangoes. We want to make it a little bit more specific, like the cost of a mango or the number of mangoes this person has. You know, if if, if our variable is going to represent some number, we ought to know what that number explicitly means. And the second step is, is you know, we're defining these, these variables to, to come up with an equation. And so we want to write two equations. And, and usually each of these equations uh, takes on a different piece of information from the story. So we're not going to come up with two different equations uh, that, that represent the same piece of information, because then um, if, you know, if we think graphically, those will really represent the same line or the same graph, and they will, it won't really help us get to the, the, the bottom of this, the, our, our problem. It's not really contributing any new information. So write two equations, equations, and then usually these will come from different pieces of information from uh, this scenario. And then the next step is to, okay, we've, if we've got two, uh, two equations and we can solve that system. And we'll arrive at you know two different numbers, um, and and really you know for these these applications of system problems where we're given some situation, um, solving the system really isn't addressing the problem. It's not that you know your numbers they they have meaning. You want to sort of describe the results of uh, what, what you want to describe what your results mean from your solution to your system of equations. So. You really want to address the original problem, and not let uh, you know some reader or some 
yeah, some reader have to do any more interpretation. Right, so a big goal in this class is being able to communicate mathematics. And, and if you're leaving work for, for your reader to, to do, then, then you're not really uh, communicating or efficiently or addressing the problem uh, completely. So really the last step you want to do is describe what the results mean for the problem. And then maybe, you know, one last step that I'll write in blue here because it's not necessarily mandatory, but but I would encourage it. I would I would encourage you to to check that that your results, you know, they make sense. You know, it's very there's a lot going on with these problems. You know, quite a few steps, and it's easy to to lose a sign, make a small mistake, and and arrive at some uh, nonsensical answer. Um, and it's you know important to, to pause and, and reevaluate uh, that that your results make sense, um, and and you can do that more explicitly by you know checking your equations, checking your solution back into your systems of equations, um, or you can just take a step back and say you know does this quantity make sense for the situation or the word problem? Okay, and so uh, the next thing I want to say is that a lot of the times with these sorts of problems. Uh, you'll have to recognize some sort of value. Uh, and, and we saw this in, in the, the problem with uh, Jeremiah and his, his quarters and dimes. We had to talk about the, the value that he had in quarters and the value, you know, the amount of money he had in dimes. Um, and maybe just to, just to pin this idea down a little bit more, just to remind you, um, maybe let's do some very nice quick examples. So let's say, you know, I bought 10 hot dogs and they were $3 each. Well, how much would, would I have paid for these hot dogs? Well, I would have paid 10 times this $3. This would be uh, $30 in total. Let's say I bought uh, some tickets to the concert, and they were twenty-five dollars per ticket. Let's say I, let's say I bought seven tickets. Well, how much would I have paid at the end of the day? I would have paid uh, one hundred seventy-five dollars, and that that really comes from uh, the cost of each ticket times the number of tickets purchased. Or let's say. You know, I, a friend of mine was making uh, $16 per hour at work, and they worked uh, 11 hours. Well, how much money would they make? Well, it would be the amount that they were earning, the $16 per hour, times the number of hours they worked. So what is this? This is 176. And, and really, in general, uh, if we have the value, actually, maybe let me rephrase this. If we have uh, the price per object of something, or the, or the value of some object, multiplied with the number of those objects, like for the, the hot dog case, for example, if we have uh, $3 per hot dog and, and we've bought 10 hot dogs, well then multiplying those two quantities gives you the, the total price of paying for all of, all of those objects. Um, or the, you know, if you have the value of an object times the, the number of those objects and it's the total value. <coughs> and, and so this will come up again and again and, and in our problems when we want to come up with uh, an equation involving involving purchasing things or selling things. Okay, so let's start let's start solving some systems of equations and, and making some systems. Okay, so here I've got this word problem that says the length of a rectangle is two feet more than three times its width. If the perimeter is forty-four feet, 
what is the area of the rectangle? Okay, so uh, you know it's not always the case that we'll have some geometric problem, um, but if you do have a problem like this, you want to draw a picture first. I think if you can draw a picture and make sense of what's going on in this picture, then you really set yourself up fairly well. Okay, so we've got a rectangle here, and, and we don't know uh, we don't know the dimensions of this rectangle. And and so I know earlier I said, you know, there's some unknown quantity, usually in these word problems, and and usually it's uh, you want to make your variables the the unknown quantity that you're trying to figure out. But but here, you know, we're trying to figure out area. And really, to figure out this area, we need to know the length and the width, right? Remember that that area, at least for a rectangle, is the length times the width. If L represents the length, then W represents the width. So let me let me do that here. Let me define capital L actually to be the length of this rectangle. And we're talking in terms of feet here and W to be the, the width, again, in feet. And if we can figure these two quantities out, we'll be done, because then when we multiply them, we'll get the area. And so now, you know, we, we've got our two variables. We just need two equations. And, and one equation, uh, would, you know, we've got some pieces of information here. One equation can come from the fact that the length of the rectangle is two feet more than three times the width. And then another equation ought to come from this other fact that the perimeter is 44 feet. Maybe this, this equation from this blue statement might be a little bit easier. Uh, so we talked about a while ago how we find the, the perimeter of a rectangle. So the perimeter is, is really just a measurement of the border, adding up all the side lengths for a shape. And so if we know that, that the perimeter is 44 feet, then really that's saying uh, L plus L, or in other words, 2L, right? This, this length here added on with this length alongside uh, the width added on with this width, or in other words, 2W, this needs to be 44 if we know that the perimeter ends up being 44 feet. Okay, what about the statement in blue? Well, it says the length of a rectangle is two feet more than three times the width. So two feet more than something is like saying adding on two to something. But two to what? What are we adding on two onto? We're, it's two more than three times the width. Three times, well, we, we're using W to represent the width. L is the same as two plus three times W. So let me write that down here. L is equal to two plus three times W. Okay, so we have two equations and two variables and these equations really represent different ideas from the problem. Let's solve this system. And, and we can use substitution here, right? L is the same as two plus W, two plus three W. So in the above equation, when I see L, I can instead think of it as two plus three W, what L is the same as. So this tells us we've got two times two plus three W. And when we add it on with two times the width, this is going to give us 44, right? Two times the length plus two times the width is going to give us the perimeter. And so when we distribute this to uh, and simplify our equation in one variable, we're taking away four from both sides. I get 40 on the right. And then 6w plus 2w is 8w. And so the width is equal to 5. And here we're talking about 5 feet. But then next we know that the length will show us two plus three times the width. In other words, two plus three times 
5. And so what is this? Uh, this is 15 plus 2. This is 17, again, 17 feet. And we're not done yet because remember, you know, solving a system of equations really isn't what we're looking to answer here. Um, the, the big question at the end of the day is, what is the area of the rectangle? And so now we just have to multiply the length and the width, and we'll have the area. And so here, the area of this rectangle, this is equal to uh, the length times the width, which is equal to 17 times 5. In other words, uh, this is, well, 10 times 5 is 50, 7 times 5 is 35. So we've got 85. And this isn't just feet, this is, you know, for measuring, uh, for measuring sort of a surface or an area, this is in square feet, feet squared. And so this is the answer to our problem. And so we didn't have to do anything too clever, we could just kind of follow our noses, make some equations, and solve this system of equations to, to figure out this area without any guessing and checking. Okay, let's do another example here. Uh, so here there are 28 chickens and goats in a farm. If there are 82 legs altogether, actually, so I forgot to mention, um, I posted an activity on, on Canvas. This is actually one of the problems from the activity that I want to go over at the end of this video. Maybe let's, let's do the other problem first, actually. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so here the, in this problem, we've got the fact that an auditorium has 500 balcony seats and 2,100 main level seats. If tickets for balcony seats cost $18 less than tickets for main level seats, what should the price of each type of ticket be so that the total revenue from a sell-up performance will be 28, oh, that doesn't make sense. Uh, will be, I think I wrote this problem a little too quickly, 128,800 dollars. Okay, so we want to figure out the price of each ticket so that, you know, when they have a sell-up performance, uh, this place will have made $128,000, uh, $128,800. And so we know how many seats there are, right? There are 500 balcony seats and 2,100 main level seats. Um, the question is, we, we don't know how much each seat should cost. Right? There is this idea that there's uh, $18 floating around, right? If, if tickets for balcony seats cost $18 uh, less than, $18 less than tickets for main level seats. So we don't actually know the cost of each kind of seat, we just know that how they're related to each other. And so the fact that we don't know the cost of the, the each kind of seat uh, tells us that, that we might want to let those be represented with some variables here. So here, let me let M Maybe I'll choose a different color so it's not uh, associated with that the, the part underlined in light blue. Let me let me let M not just be the main level seats, but but here uh, let's define it as. And we already know the number of main level seats there are. We need to know the cost. The cost of a main level seat. And there's balcony seats as well that we don't know the cost of. So let's, let's let B represent the cost of a balcony seat. And so this, this underlines the in blue, it says if tickets for balcony seats cost $18 less than tickets for main level seats, and it goes on to ask us, uh, you know, what should the pr each price be? 
but, but we know that a tickets for balcony seats are $18 less than tickets for main level seats. In other words, uh, the cost of a balcony seat, you know, it's not the same as a main level seat, it's, it's $18 less than a main level seat ticket. Right, the main level seat ticket is more expensive, the balcony seat is $18 less than the main level seat. M take away 18 will give me the price of a balcony seat. Okay, what about the statement underlined in, in dark green? Well, this statement is about, uh, it tells us how many seats there are. And, and at the end of the day, we're trying to relate this all to $128,000, uh, 128800 In other words, we wanna make sure that this, this company or this, this venue they earn a total, a total amount of one hundred twenty-eight thousand um, dollars, and so here, if if we add up how much they earn from balcony seats and how much they earn from main level seats. And that better earn them $128,800. All right, well, how do I express the earnings from balcony seats? Well, if there, we know that there are 500 balcony seats and we don't know the cost, but whatever it is, when we multiply it with those 500 seats, that's gonna be how much the balcony seats earn uh, this, this, uh, venue. And similarly, there are 2,100 main level seats. When we multiply that quantity with the value of each main level seat, that's going to give us how much this venue can earn from main level seats. And when we add those together, that needs to be $128,800. Okay, and actually we're set up for substitution here, right? Here I, I see, oh, sorry about that. That's my uh, table from calculus. Okay, so we're set up for substitution here. Um, I have this expression for B. All right, so B is the same as M minus 18, so I can replace that into this B here. 500 multiplied with M minus 18, in other words, uh, our expression for, for B, it's M minus 18 is the same as B, added with 2100M is equal to $128,800. And so when we distribute, we get 500M minus, all right, what's 500 times 18, uh, I believe, so we get 5,000, 5,000, and another 4,000, so this is, I believe this is 9,000, plus 2,100M is equal to 128,800. So adding up the like terms, we get 2,600M is equal to, and adding the 9,000 to both sides, this is 137,800. And then dividing both sides by maybe 100 to simplify things first. So I don't have a calculator. Let's, let's hope that I can do this off the top of my head. Okay, so I don't think I can. Let me let me do this this division. 
So if I take 1,378 and I divide it by 26, uh, M ends up being 53. Right, so this is the cost for a main level seat. And then we know that uh, the balcony seat is M minus 18. In other words, uh, 18 take away 53, or 53 take away 18, sorry, but that is, is 35. This is the cost of the balcony seat. Okay. So uh, those are really the, the main problems I want you to, to I want to go over. Let me let me ask you to try the activity out um, and, and, and practice these, these problems and these ideas.